another episode of Cancer Tamer. I'm your host, Dr. Charlie Ferrer. And with me today, as always, is Deborah Santuli Barone with a special guest. Some of you have been writing in asking us questions about what <laughs> what's going on and about men in particular. And so we wanted to bring today a special guest, um, Arnaldo Silver, who's here with us today. And um, I'm going to let him tell his story. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm Arnaldo Silver, and I'm a nine-year male breast cancer survivor. Uh, my journey started, I was taking a shower, and I felt the lump on my right breast. And I let it go thinking it was an ingrown hair or a pimple. But as m weeks went by, I noticed it was getting larger and larger. So I went to my primary doctor, and what he diagnosed me was fatty tissue. Don't worry about it. Go home. You know, he's the doctor. So I took what he said. So it kept getting larger and larger. I went to my daughter. She said, Dad, go for a second opinion. When I went for my second opinion, uh, <laughs> excuse me, still reopened oh, wounds. Sure, of course. Um, it was a female doctor. She, she started out with the same diagnosis. Oh, but when she grabbed it, she said, oh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm going to get this biopsy. And to me, that's talking Chinese. I didn't know what she was talking about. But they sent me to get biopsied, and that's when she called me back into her office and said, sit down. I need to talk to you. She says, you have cancer. And right there, like, everything that's, that's, went quiet. Everything went quiet. And you know, and like, yeah. just all the, all, the, all the sound stopped. Everything. I mean, it because was just quiet. Because you just hear hash. Yeah. Were you alone? I was alone. Oh, you were alone. Yeah, wow. I was alone. So, um, oh, boy. She, she turned around. She said, are you, are you all right? I said, how am I going to be all right? You just finished telling me I have cancer. She goes, but you fell in the 1% of the male breast cancer, and we got to move right away. So I said, but wait a minute. Can I ask you a question? She goes, yeah, go ahead. I said, how much time do I have? Because back then, any time you hear cancer, right after that comes time. death. Yeah. So she started laughing. I said, oh, what's so funny? She goes, Silva, in order today for somebody to die of breast cancer, it's been because they neglected to get checked. Right. Sure. So. I mean, they treated me like a female. They sent me to a mammogram, sonogram. I walked into the room, about 20 women sitting there, and all of a sudden the focus came as I was walking through the door. So right there, I started to feel uncomfortable. And I'm sitting there, finally some lady leaned over and she says, are you here for your wife? I said, no, I'm here for me. And at that moment, the technician walked in. She said, Mr. Silver, come with me. I follow into the room. Put this pink gown on. I said, "Okay, this is for real." <laughs> I said, "This you is get for the real." Gown. Yeah, the pink gown, get everything. Treated like a woman. She oh, says, uh, "We're gonna mammogram you." I says, "I don't think so." She says, "Oh, we're gonna get something." Oh, jeez. So they take me to the mammogram, and then all of a sudden that machine came and it's squeezing, it's squeezing. I said, "Oh," and I told her, "I said, listen, you're hurting me." She goes, "Oh, really?" So now you know how us women feel. Oh, I says, nope, time out. Wow. <laughs> Take me off this machine. I says, I don't want no part of this. So the supervisor walked in and said, what's going on? I says, I just want to go. Yeah. And see, that's, you know, just, just to stop you for a minute, because that's one of the things that not only for men, but for women as well, is the inappropriateness sometimes that you'll experience from medical staff that's true. and from the people that are supposed to be helping you. And not saying that it happens across the board. Oh, it's yeah. just the piece of every now and then you get somebody that's insensitive. Mm -hmm. You get somebody that, you know, that isn't doing you know they just look at you like oh it's one more person it's one more it's one more yes, object one right. more thing one more you know one more Number. individual yeah you're just a statistic and so being able to say wait a minute you know i you know standing up for yourself mm -hmm. and advocating for yourself and saying um no 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 that's not how we're going to do this. Right. You know, something as simple as, and, and it happened to me last week, I went in for an, an MRI, and the woman, you know, goes, oh, Dr. Charlie, we're ready for you, and she starts walking. And I'm like, okay, let me get my things, and yeah. she's already down the hall. And I'm like, you know, miss, 
you might want to walk with me, right. not in front of me. I'm, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm ready for my execution. I feel like I'm, you know, going to prison and seeing the principal's <laughs> office, you know, <laughs> something. But, you know, yes. you don't walk in front of your patient. You walk with your patient. Right. You know, something as simple as that. And mm -hmm. so that's why it's so yeah. important to advocate for yourself. Yeah. You know, for me as a man, it was kind of rough because yeah. it wasn't explained to me. It wasn't, okay, we're going to do this A, B, C, D. Nothing. Here, we're going to go buy up. Nobody explained to me what a biopsy was. Nobody explained to me, okay, listen, this is how we're going to do this, how we're going to... It was just thrown out cold. You got cancer, we're going to do this. Did they do it the same day, the biopsy? No, they oh, waited wow. about uh, two, three days after. Oh, yeah. wow. She took me in and... And what kind of doctor was it? Uh, it was a technician. You know, she... No, but I'm saying the doctor that diagnosed it, what kind of doctor was it? Well, it was the male the first time. A male doctor. A male doctor. But I mean, like a primary. Uh, what it was kind a of primary a doctor? doctor. Oh, wow, wow. Yeah, okay. He was primary it wasn't a doctor. breast doctor. No, it yet. wasn't. So, oh, and again, it's to me, I felt yeah. I'm alone. Right. I've never heard of men having breast cancer. Nobody's giving me answers. Nobody's telling me this, and nobody's telling me that. Yeah. And then um. Yeah, and I'm just going to interject because one of the one of the books that we have um, from Cancer Tamers called Breast Cancer from Diagnosis to Surgery, and it's one of those books that it actually takes you through the whole process. Mm -hmm. It's not about treatment. It's not about you know you should do this or that. But it's like here's here's step one. Here's step two. Here's ways of you know the things and the reasons why all these tests mm -hmm. are necessary and what they're going to do because. You know, going in cold, yeah. it's it's that part of I don't know what you're doing to me. Oh, you're gonna stick me in a little cube, and I'm gonna be like a, you know, like a ear swab going mm -hmm. in and out. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's it's a really great book for those of you know those that need it, mm -hmm. of being able to say, well, these are the tests that I'm gonna get. This is why. This is what I can expect. And on top of that, it also helps you to mm -hmm. to plan your life forward. Mm -hmm. You know, get your posse together, get right. the help that you need, and stuff like that. Did you, um, were you under anesthesia or they just numbed it? No, they put me under. Oh, that's good. They put okay. me under and... For the biopsy? You know, <coughs> oh, for yes, the biopsy, you. they just local. Okay. Oh, so you were awake yes. for the biopsy? I mean, though. the sound that machine makes is... Oh, it's horrible. I felt like running out the room. What are you doing? I started crying. Yeah, I felt like... <laughs> really? So, you know, like, again, nobody explained the, the procedure. Nobody explained how it was going to go down. So I went from B... To see the D, nobody talking to me, nobody. Before I knew it, I was in surgery. Wow. They're removing my breasts. Boom. They wrapped me up. I said, this is like an airport. You go in one way, you're out there. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't like yeah. stay Little overnight. Little assembly line. Yeah. 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 You know, it's it's not about stay overnight, let's see if you know. No, Nothing. They sent me it. home right after surgery. Yeah, and I you was had a lot a of dog. lymph nodes taken yeah. out too. And that's the piece, um, you know, where I would say you really have to advocate for yourself. Mm -hmm. Because for me, when I went through my surgery, I kept telling them, and I and I arranged it with the doctor to stay overnight because I didn't have family to take care of me, yeah. and and I didn't know what to expect. And all I heard was, "Hey, it's gonna, it's gonna hurt." It's mm -hmm. like Freddy Krueger came to visit, yeah. you know. And so. The, the situation that I was in was really horrible, right. where they just dragged me off the bed, threw me in a, in a wheelchair and yeah. said, get out. That's basically what they did to and, me. Yeah. No, no, and, follow up, no this, no that. Here, go no. home, you're discharged. Yeah, you're discharged. I was throwing up my son and my son-in-law. Oh, and that hurts just to throw up. <laughs> I got home, they got to carry me up the stairs. Wow. Then that's when yeah. my daughter said, Dad, what happened? I said, that's it, I'm discharged. She said, no, wait a minute. They're not giving you any follow-up, no follow treatment? I said, no. So that's when she got her doctor involved. And when I went to her, she says, what did they do to you? I said, well, here's the scar. She said, oh my God, oh. they butchered you. Wow. So yeah. then that's when she took over. And... Yeah. So you didn't have a breast surgeon operate on you? You just had like a general surgeon? I'll be as very as honest. Now? I don't know who. Oh, okay. Who operated on me. <laughs> you just they, laid there and said, go for it. That's it. They knocked yes. me out. Oh, I woke up. Wow. I don't know who cut me, when they cut me. All I know, I was missing my breasts. So you didn't meet the surgeon ahead of time? No. Nah. Oh, let it be known, though. No, uh, a lot of people don't know that men have breast tissue. You know, it's not just chest like chest muscles or whatever, mm -hmm. there's actually some breast tissue, and that's what could make it with the estrogen. It's a hormone-induced right. breast cancer. Is that always the, the case with men? Is it always hormone-induced, as far as uh, everyone no. knows? No. Uh, oh, okay, I was wondering. It, it, you know, and, and I would say, when in doubt, always talk to your physician. Right. But also making sure, you know, and, and 
Arnaldo, you brought up a great point. It's the fact that you're on an assembly line here, go one, two, three, A, B, C, D, but nobody's talking to you. And that's why it's so important to turn around and say, let's put a stop to everything and let's start explaining things. Mm -hmm. You know, let me get somebody in here. Hey, what about a second opinion? Yeah. Because a lot of people will turn around and say, oh, well, my doctor said, right. and that's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. And it's wonderful that you listen to your doctor, which you should, um, to a point. Yeah, we don't you believe know, in listen just one to opinion. Your, yeah, <laughs> listen to your doctor, get that information, go and get your own information, and then go for that second and third opinion, you know, because you need to know, well, you know, what other options are there? Right. Um, what other things can I do? How am I going to live on down the road? Right. Because one of the things that happens with, with individuals that when, like you said, you hear the word cancer. Yeah, the entire it. world ends, your, yeah, your brain even fogs, and right. you don't know what else is going on because it's just, you know, total wipeout. Wipe out, yeah. And so being able to say, wait a minute, I have questions. Where do I look for answers? Who do I go to? Mm -hmm. Where's that nurse navigator? Um, a lot of hospitals now are giving you a nurse navigator, which will help you navigate through the process. So they're there to help answer questions and such. But what I find with individuals is that they don't know where to ask. I mean, mm -hmm. when I got it, I didn't know where to ask. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I didn't know what to do. All I know is that my family had a history of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. My mother died from it. You know, my grandmother died from cervical cancer. I mean, on down the road. And so it was, you know, yeah. that, that thought of, oh my God, this is it. But it's, it's stepping back and going, okay, let's not live in fear. Mm -hmm. Let's start right. looking for people, looking for answers, calling, you know, um, American Cancer Society that has a right. great uh, information. Even, I yeah. mean, something. Yeah. Or even something to say, can I talk to the social worker? And the yeah, social they should have gave them a out. social worker. You know, that's another yeah. thing too. Why didn't they, they direct you anywhere? But the whole thing is, is to be able. It's very hard to think, so you need other people around you to hear what's going mm -hmm. on, so that maybe. And even with everything that we thought of, I'm sure you read up before your operation. I know I read up. I still missed a few things. Yeah, uh, you know, because there's always something. I I was totally dumbfounded because I to me I didn't know what they were talking about. Right. Yeah. Okay, they found it, they took it out, and that was it. Mm -hmm. No explanation until later on that my daughter got involved right. to find out they didn't want to mammogram her because she was only 33. Because right. the doctor had told her, oh, you got to get tested, genetically tested. I didn't even know what they were talking about. I didn't even know what they meant by that. Right, whoever and heard the, of these words? And the insurance yeah. people turned it down because yeah. they never heard of male breast cancer. So yeah. the doctor got on the phone, I don't know who she spoke to, all I know is that 20 minutes later, it was approved. Really? It was approved. Yes. Um, That's great. After surgery, she says, you gotta get your children tested. I said, for what? Um, you tested positive for the BRCA2 gene. And I'm saying, okay, well, it's a BRCA2 gene. Right. She says, you have a mutation of one of your genes. Your cancer does not go away, it just goes into remission. I said, okay, she says, and possibly, you transferred it to your kids. Right which my daughter at that time, they didn't want a mammogram. Her. The doctor took her down personally and got her mammogram. That's beautiful. To find that out that. that she had cancer, breast cancer. Yeah. Wow, what stage was she? Uh, I think they caught her stage one or oh. two. She wasn't that bad, but they. Right. Wow, that's fantastic. They, um, that they were able to the do The bottom line, so me quick. and her took chemo together. Oh, so now what stage yeah. were you? I was already going on three. Three already? That's why they removed How big cancer. was your tumor, do you know? Well, when I recall? felt it felt like a a jawbreaker, you know, them big. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. But well, when right. they took it out, it, it was much larger because all they were grabbing was the outside. The outside. Of it. Oh, right, right because it's almost like an iceberg that sometimes mm -hmm. goes open more. And you had how many? You said 90% of your lymph nodes? 90% of my lymph nodes were removed. Amazing. Yeah, so then my daughter came back positive, then my son came back positive also with really? the BRCA2 gene. That's when I completely just. You lost it, I'm I, sure, I, at that I point. I was done. Yeah. You know, because. Um, I always took it as, wow, this is the way my kids are going to remi remember me as. I passed this on to them. Mm -hmm. And the doctor said, listen, Silva, take it this way. You saved your daughter's life. Because if it wasn't for you, she was only 33. By the time she would have got mammogram, it would have been too late. Mm 
<laughs> so she now, would have been higher yeah. stages. So well, my concern they, now is my grandchildren. Well, wait. Yeah. Well, what do they do for your son if your son is BRCA positive? They just watch or something? Yeah. He goes oh. every three or six months to get oh. tested. Okay. So, and that's the one piece that you know we were talking before, um, we, before we were on on the show um, about the genetic testing and understanding that you can ask for genetic testing. Some insurance companies, it'll have to be your doctor that mm -hmm. that requests it. And there's a difference between genetic testing, a full genetic panel, mm -hmm. and just looking for the BRCA1 or 2 gene. Okay. And my recommendation, and, and talk to your doctors, but from my personal experience, and, and my recommendation would be get a full panel done. Mm -hmm. Because if you're just going in to get a testing for BRCA1 or 2, that's not the only gene that can cause breast cancer or any other kind of cancers. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just the most commonly found gene mm -hmm. that's associated with breast cancer. And on the other piece, and the one piece that I always make sure that you guys know, just because you have that gene does not mean that you're going to end up with breast cancer. Right. Right. It just means that you're at a higher risk, more susceptible. Mm -hmm. So at that point, you start making sure that you eat better, that you exercise, <laughs> that you take care of your body, that you watch what you put into it, that you, you know, you really, you know, mm -hmm. start taking care of your health. And that's what it is. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of there's there's a major misconception, which actually like irritates me, um, because of the fact that people are running out and getting their breasts cut off. Right. You know, especially right. women. I mean, we're the only, you know, we're the only country that actually encourages women to mutilate themselves. You know, it's like, oh, you got the gene, you better hurry up and go and get them cut off. Mm -hmm. And that's where I get upset because just because you have the gene does not mean that you will end up with breast cancer. You are at a higher risk, but it doesn't mean that you will get yeah, it. Yeah. And so don't run out and get yourself, you know, yeah. amputated, you know, and get <laughs> your breasts removed and have a, a dual <clears throat> mastectomy when you're just opening yourself up to a, a whole nother issue of, of situations. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, remembering, and I have to be on my horse here, but remembering <laughs> the fact that you know, you've heard of metastatic breast cancer. And what metastatic breast cancer is that it's breast cancer that has spread to other parts of your body. So listen to that again. Metastatic breast cancer is breast cancer that has spread to other parts of your body. Right. So that means it's in your arms, your legs, your back, your brain, your chest wall, your chest, yeah. anywhere else other than your breast. So just because you cut them off does not mean that you won't get metastatic mm -hmm. breast cancer. Especially if you It just means that you don't have breasts. Right. That's all it means. Well, see, that's why so I make sure you talk to your, but, no, but so but make she sure you talk. But had an uh, right, I guess. Yeah, um, that was, but they had already found the breast cancer. It right. wasn't like, oh, I want to get them off because I have the gene. They had already found the breast cancer mm -hmm. with her? Right. No, well, my daughter, no, they, they uh, when they mammogrammed her, they found that she had the mm -hmm. cancer already. Right. But she did everything they asked her to do, and it still keeps coming back. So mm -hmm. that's what's got her a little, this, you know. Yeah, but it depends on what it is, if it's um, estrogen-induced or HER2, you know, mm -hmm. like there's different... Um, uh, I guess there are there are different right? hormones that yeah, are connected to it and and that's the piece that breast cancer can spread mm -hmm. it can spread to other parts of your body it can it can you know open the door to a lot of other conditions um, and so that's why educating yourself you right. know we always talk about and Deborah and I are so big ever since we started this back in you know three <laughs> years ago yeah. that we always talk about uh, you know, advocate, 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 and educate, and educate yourself. Yeah. Because if you're not advocating for yourself, nobody else is doing it for you. And if you're not educating yourself, you don't know to say, um, "Wait a minute, isn't there an alternative? <coughs> Wait a minute, um, you know, I I think we need to address these other issues, or I haven't had my testing yet, or you know, maybe there's another medicine that isn't." so bad for me um, and being able to talk that way and I know one of the things that you wanted to talk about was um, medicine and male um, men getting women's medicine exactly oh, they, would okay. get, they, um, 
they gave me tamoxifen. Right. That's a female. See, our, our genes are different. Right. Why would you give me something that goes for a female? Because they it have nothing else. They didn't yeah, study Yeah, well, that's it. what they were telling me. I, I was yeah. getting tired of hearing Neon Silver was treating you like a female because we really have no Yeah, they didn't have anything. So why are you still giving me this medication where I stopped taking it within maybe three, four months because I couldn't take the mood swings, the sweating, the headaches, oh. agitation. And I told my doctor, listen, I can't. She said, well, you know, your estrogen is off the chart. Mm -hmm. Men produce estrogen, but they small amount. Mine was off the chart. So I said, well, maybe I was supposed to be born a female. <laughs> and I, I turned <laughs> it around as a joke. Right? 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 Maybe I was supposed to. They, yeah, I have like, breast cancer. Now, but uh, so yeah. I just want to put the word out there for men. Please, it's not a female's disease. We're dying. This year alone, there's going to be 4,000 men diagnosed with breast cancer. Mm -hmm. 500 of them are going to die. Yeah. Because by the time we decide, well, you know what, this is a little, it's bothering me, let me go get a check, it might be a little too late. Right. So what we're trying to do is have your primary doctor examine you, oh. examine your breasts. Do you because, think they know how to really do that? Well, I, I don't know. It's, it's, you know we but have I guess been, they'd feel it if it was big. Yeah. But, what angers me is with us men, they always down south on us. Right. Yeah. Cough. Cough. <laughs> right. Oh, I'm coughing. What, what does that tell you? <laughs> <laughs> so we're trying to make the breast right, examination yeah. for men. Yeah. That's and, important. You're right. I mean, it's true. It's a lot of us. It's a stigma. You know, oh, man, because I remember every time somebody saw me, silver breast cancer. I know. Isn't that, that, that a female disease? Yeah. It got to the point I didn't even want to go to work. Yeah. You know, but my doc, I mean, my, my boss was kind enough. He said, Silva, come to work. Just stay in the boiler room. Wow. Just yeah. stay in there. That's and so understanding sad. that the exam, the, the breast exam for men, is the same exact it's exam as it is for women. Yeah. And so for men to detect whether or not they have breast cancer, they just need to do the, the exam. They right. go and they check their breasts, just like women do. You know, if you want to get, like, sexy about it, get your partner <laughs> to do it for you. You know, have your partner go, hey, do you want to you play doctor today? You know, come and check me out. Um, you know, so it is the same exact um, the same exact exam. The only difference is that you'll get a lot of doctors aren't familiar right. with the fact that men also get breast cancer. And so, um, you know, that. they they kind of like overlook it or they'll say, well, it's fatty tissue or, yeah. you know, you don't need to worry about it. It's an ingrown hair and it'll yeah. go away and so on and so forth. Um, like we've been seeing mm -hmm. um, with the Male Breast Cancer Coalition, Peggy Miller and Brat Miller, who was actually one of the, they were both one of the founders mm -hmm. of the Brat Miller um, T1 Foundation because of the fact that when he was um, first diagnosed, it was already seven years right. into the fact that he had been bringing the situation back to his doctor mm -hmm. and saying, hey, you know, there's something here, what's going on, what's going on? And they kept telling him for seven years, it's it's just the guy thing, don't worry about that's it. It's crazy. Um, yeah. And so, f you know, that's where we always talk about be your own best advocate. Go, hey, this is not right. And if you need to change doctors, then change doctors. Dump the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Dump the doctor. I love that. See, I, um, if it wasn't for the Male Breast Cancer Coalition, I wouldn't be doing this. Right. Because it's like your taboo, you know, you don't hear about it. So, what am I, a freak? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm glad that I, I joined them because I got I got to experience and meet other men right, which that makes are going you feel, through the same situation you know, that I was. It, it wasn't that I was alone out there. It's like more or less I call it coming out of the closet. Yeah, it you is. You know, because right. it was tearing me up. I didn't want to, you know, every time I heard silver, female disease, it was driving me crazy. You know, so. And it is that prejudice that's out mm -hmm. there. Yeah, that, that I commend you. You know, the, you know? that. You know, I don't want to say so much prejudice, but it is that idea of we hear it so much. Yeah. Um, and I think um, Sherry Ambrose, who's um, one of the founders of uh, mm -hmm. Breast Cancer Coalition, we did an interview with her, and she said men are drowning in a sea of pink. 
Mm -hmm. And I thought that was a wonderful comment that she made because, you know, it is that part of we just think of women. Right. You know, right. we just think of, you know, that same prejudice that we had when men started saying that they wanted to be able to raise their children. Mm -hmm. Right. Back in, you know, in the 1980s and, right. and mm -hmm. 70s. You never heard of that. Right. right. Family know? league and then take off. Yeah. You know, and so family. being able to realize that you know, we need to, as a society, start opening up our eyes right. and notice that it's not just women, it's not just men, it's also younger right. women. Because you also have younger women, younger than, than, you know, in their 30s and 20s, that are also getting breast cancer. So being able to then say, it's an everyone disease, and so we need to we need to look at it from that perspective. And also the fact that, you know, a lot of people talk about genetics and how, well, you passed it down to your daughter and, mm -hmm. you know, and then you start feeling guilty. Oh my God, what did I do to my child? And so on. But it's like, it's not just genetics, it's also environmental, mm -hmm. you know. So, yes. you know, I've had a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, your mom passed it to you and your grandma passed it to you. And I'm like, no, no, no. We all lived in the same house. <laughs> right. We all lived in the same That's country true. in the same location, you know. We were all in, in Puerto Rico where they right. did all the experiments over there and so they screwed us up over there <laughs> you know and so it's it's not just you know you don't need to feel guilty about the fact that you passed it on because it's yes you passed it on but it's also environmental it's also you know sociological it, it there's a lot of factors in there mm -hmm. and so looking at that being you know part of the issue and so um you know I, we're almost at the end of our show, <laughs> so I want to make sure that we that we get any any anything kind of else? comment, anything that you want to bring out there. Um, well, first share. of all, I would like to thank you all in the <laughs> cancer tamers, and also I want to thank the Male Breast Coalition because we're out there putting the word out, and I want people to understand that we're out here. We're not animals. We're not freaks. We're human beings. We just happen to get struck with the same disease. And it's time that the month of October, please show us we're going through this. It's not only the females, we're going through it also. And it also affects your family. So please, get yourself men, get yourself tested. If not for you, for your family, for your loved ones. So that way you don't have to go through what I went through because I still go through it on a daily basis. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, we thank you for thank your you. bravery mm -hmm. and for uh, speaking up for all men. Yeah. So you've been listening to Cancer Tamer. If you want more information, get information about the shows coming up, be able to learn about Male Breast Cancer Coalition, please feel free to visit us at www.cancertamer.org and view the shows. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Thank you.